Hi guys, welcome to FD12. We're going to take a little break from PowerPoints. We're going to take a look at the world of spec sheets. Um, this is going to be a two-part video, so um, I'm going to do the first part. We're just going to explain a little bit what spec sheets are and uh, look at some of the measurement points used at, uh, on simple spec sheets for knit tops. Um, so we're going to do um, probably a couple weeks on spec sheets themselves, but we're really going to start pretty simple um, so we sort of get familiar with them because, you know, overly complex spec sheets can get um, very overwhelming very quickly. Um, just the vast amount of measurements needed and, you know, kind of the jargon used um, uh, to refer to our measurements and to our measurement points can get a little overwhelming. So we're going to start super simple um uh really really basic just to take a look at them um but um at this point we should have a, a general understanding of what spec sheets are because i went over them in the industry overview um uh announcement but just to sort of reintroduce it so spec sheets are done typically when our sample garments are finished and they are basically measurement charts so spec sheets is um short for specification sheet and what that means is it specifies all the measurements uh, needed to produce a certain um, garment. Now a lot of these, um, if you take a look sort of at Google, we can sort of get uh, the examples of some spec sheets and things like that. Now a lot of these spec sheets, I've noticed um, the ones that you can find sort of on Google, um, they don't have as many measurement points as I'm really used to seeing in the industry. Um, probably because most of these are, are really, they're either students or they're, they're basically just general samples that were never meant to be used in production. Uh, but most of the time, you know, uh, when I see, you know, look at this, this is a collared shirt with this many measurements, I would never see this sort of a collared shirt with all the buttons and the collars and the darts and the little plackets and stuff. Uh, this would have many, you know, this would be full of measurements here. It would probably have alternative pages um, that narrowed in on, on certain details like, you know, the cuff here is to get the uh, uh, sleeve vents and the cuffs and the button placements and another one for the collar and things like that. So just, you know, the idea of having this many measurements for a collared shirt like this with that many details is is really unrealistic um so uh i've tried to look for um specification sheet samples um but there are really not very many good ones, ones out there, there and most of the ones, ones out there again just have, have too few measurements i mean this is absolutely ridiculous amount of measurements um for something like this for a garment as complicated as this um and you say well why you know there's probably a pattern or whatever else and again, the amount of measurements that every company puts on them is really it's up to them. Um, it depends on how detailed the pattern that they're sending out is, how detailed any other sample garments they might be sending out with. But at the end of the day, the specification sheet is meant to outline exactly what the garment manufacturers are going to make. So if you send out a spec sheet with this many measurements, and, you know, there's not even anything on the collar here, and they make a completely different collar. When you get it back, and you say, hey, this isn't the collar that I wanted, and then they say, well, your spec sheet didn't say anything on it about a collar even being on there. And in fact, they probably wouldn't even put a collar on there. There's no collar measurements here. So um, as a garment manufacturer, I just wouldn't put a collar on it. It's not specified in here. And when the um, designer complains, I say, it's not in here. It's not in here at all. I was contractually, contractually obligated to make this. This is the specification sheet. It's not in the specs. I'm not making it. Why bother? Um, you still have to pay me. Um, basically, you're paying me as the garment manufacturer to make what's in here. And if it's not in here, I'm not making it. Or if I make it uh, differently, you can't go back and complain. So that's why um, it's really incentivized for designers to put as many measurements in and be as ultra specific as possible. Um, and that's why sort of as I look over these, I look, I get a little suspicious. I don't think a lot of these really are industry spec sheets. 
I think there's students or samples or, or, or just sort of the guidelines to try to sell like a, a tech pack. Because uh, there's a lot of, um, oh, I'll send you, a, a, you know, all these documents that you need. Um, but I'm making them for you. So I've made my own spec sheet for you guys to use, fillable. Um, if you want to keep it around, um, you can obviously do that. Um, and it is really geared toward a simple knit top, which is what we're going to work with first. And then we'll, we'll move on to some other garments and some more uh, complicated garments in the future. Now, I'm um, spending a lot of time on spec sheets because they're one of the most important things um, for a design company, again, to ensure that uh, you're getting the product made that you want. Um, and you're getting it made with the quality and specifications that you want. So um, again, our spec sheets are uh, really a lot are put into them, and uh, it's really important to get them done accurately. And uh, we're going to spend a lot of time sort of talking about spec sheets and different things on how to do them, because it's one of the most common tasks and responsibilities of entry-level design uh, designers. So um, you know, most every design company. Uh, that is going to be seeking uh, employees at an entry level job and even at higher level jobs, you're going to be doing specs and you're going to be doing a lot of them. Um, so if you guys have already started browsing for jobs, you'll probably see, you know, um, in the qualification needed, ability to spec, ability to make spec packs, ability to do tech packs, and spec sheets are really sort of meant as a, a, a maybe potentially a smaller part of a tech pack. A tech pack is uh, cost sheets, uh, potentially cutting uh, tickets, which we'll get to, uh, the spec sheets. So um, all these sort of pieces of information included um, within the tech pack. And again, the, the spec sheet is, is one of the most important aspects of the tech packs. Um, so, but if you look through, again, this is one of the um, most um, highly sought after skills and, and pieces of know-how um, design companies will look for in entry-level employees. Um, and it comes down to flats too, so this is this is a good idea of sort of what one looks like. We have sort of general category headings up here. Um, we'll have an image of the garment. Now, most of these you see here, they use a flat, which is fine. Uh, you use a flat sketch a lot of times uh, as well. Um, typically what I'll also see is I'll see an actual photograph image and then any of the smaller um, additional um, illustrations needed would be done flat style like you would see just down here especially this is another example where it has this sort of sleeve vent and cuff um, uh, here of course it has no specific specifications for the measurements of that so again as, as if I if you sent me this as the garment manufacturer I'd leave that out I'd leave that out I'd leave out everything because again I'm getting paid to make this which is a lot cheaper to make than this so um, you know, it's up, it's up to you to specify to the garment per, uh, manufacturers. And again, if you, if you don't, might end up sorry, might up, end up paying for something that you didn't really want. Um, so in any case, um, there's every, every company will have their own little format for it, but they'll look generally the same, have area for image, area for extra comments, uh, additional pages, to, uh, maybe for um, close-ups of design details. Like I said, maybe we'd blow up this little area down here and have another little list of measurements uh, showing that uh, as well. Now, a lot of them will also sh sort of show the measurements right on here. Um, but again, every company does it a little bit differently, but the principle is always the same. So this is a good example of their showing a lot of you know smaller details. Here's a smaller detail. Well, can I come here? Where's it gonna let me do it? So this is actually a pretty good one. So they're showing details of uh, the pockets and things. Again, this is way too small of a measurement list. I would assume that there's another whole list of measurements if it's not also included on here. So here's their specifying. Again, here's the sleeve uh, uh, sort of uh, cuff. It's, it's a little placket uh, meant to roll up the sleeves to keep them up when they're rolled up. So they're showing the length and width of that and how it's attached here. They're showing the size dimensions here of the pockets. Here they're showing the pocket placements in here. So these are probably the general overall measurements. They're showing a lot of the other particular measurements in, in here as well. Um, even, even little back uh, gathers or whatever else. So um, let's take a look at um, what we're gonna need in our measurements. And, and, and again, um, what those measurements are gonna me me mean and things like that. 
And again, we're starting really simple. We're starting with really just um, a knit t-shirt or a knit garment. So your first assignment, so just to sort of preview that, this is your spec sheet assignment. It's gonna be due after our spring break. Um, so you have plenty of time to do it. So our spring break will start on Wednesday, um, uh, which is the 8th and go till the 16th. Um, so even if you wanted to do absolutely nothing on your full spring break, you still have time to do this uh, once we come back and it will be due Monday the 20th. Um, and basically what you're going to do is I will upload a fillable spec sheet PDF onto Blackboard. You're going to use that to create a spec sheet of a simple knit top in your closet. Again, we're starting simple. So please, a t-shirt, a simple sweater, something like that. Um, you know, it can have certain if it has a pocket or if you're going to use like a polo shirt with a small placket, that's fine. But you do need to include those additional garment detail elements onto your spec sheet. So if you want to keep it simple, keep your garment simple. Please do not choose any wovens or bottoms. Um, and in addition, please do not choose any raglan sleeves. Um, a raglan sleeve looks like this and is common in simple knit, knit tops, um, but we do not have that specified. It's an armhole that goes from the armpit to the neck instead of the armpit to the low point shoulder. So please do not choose any one of those because um, this spec sheet I have uh, uh, is not set up for that. Um, uh, and again, I'm just trying to keep this first spec sheet assignment as simple as I possibly can. So, um, we're going to leave out that extra complication um, uh, uh, for this assignment right now. Um, you're going to complete that spec sheet of your simple knit top. Again, I have that, I'll have that fillable PDF um, up on the hand, in the handout section on Blackboard for this class. Include a photo of the garment that you've used back and front. Um, please include it either in your spec sheet or Email it to me separately if you want to um, use a flat sketch you made of the garment on the spec sheet instead. Um, either way is fine. I don't really mind, just as long as I get that photo. Um, and include any technical sketches laying out any details for specific parts of your garments. Again, if you have something like a pocket or a little button placket or just a small little detail that needs to be included, um, uh, in addition to the other measurements, please do that um, and include any little tiny uh, extra sketches that you might need to clarify the details on that. And again, if you pick a sufficiently simple garment, like just a simple plain t-shirt with nothing on it, you won't need that aspect. So again, you can kind of tailor it um, uh, uh, if you want. But again, I'm, I'm going to encourage you guys to keep it simple, at least for this first one. We'll have opportunities to get little bit more crazy as we progress but so let's take a look at the um, spec sheet I'm giving you guys to fill out it's gonna look like this okay so it's very simple it's very basic um, all these little uh, areas are filled out so let's take a look at each area and what needs to be put in them so this top section up here is just general information about the garment so you'll have the date. And again, you have to sort of think of this uh, not like, you know, you're a fashion student doing this in your home, but imagine you're working for a company. So um, what you're going to do up here is um, uh, it doesn't have a place, but this would typically have your company logo and name and things like that up here, not just spec sheet nip top. Um, but again, company name and logo and, and la la la. Um, you'd have a date. You know, you can use the same date season, make up a season that you're making this for, um, uh, you know, put it in the future or whatever. Um, style number, make up a style number. So as we know, every individual garment for a collection will have its own unique style number and to help organization. So we put it style number here. You're going to put the fiber content down here. This should be labeled on uh, your shirt by law. So just copy what it says there. Fabric type. So again, if it's um, uh, uh, this should be again a knit, but if you want to um, specify that further, so if it's you know a jersey knit like for a t-shirt, if it's an interlock knit, 
if it's you're doing a sweater and it has like a rib knit or a cable knit or a stockingette knit um, let me know about it here in the fabric type uh, we also have weight and yardage so um, you don't have to do both you can do either or um, a lot of uh, garment or factories I'm sorry a lot of fashion companies um, will instead of doing pricing by yardage we'll do pricing by weight instead depending on you know just sort of how they do it um, yardage is still probably the more common one but um, here what you're going to do is you're either going to estimate the yardage needed to create the garment that you're specking or if you have the ability you can just weigh it weigh the entire garment and put it down here um, so either is fine. If there's any trim for the garment, label it here. If there's any buttons on the garment, label uh, the type and number needed, um, and also size of buttons. So you can do that in line size or just you know um, inch diameter if you don't know the line size. Um, uh, preferably, it would be done in line size, and you can look up uh, line size um, uh, conversion charts on the internet pretty easy. So what you would do is if you have, you know, um, a little, you know, a couple buttons or something on, a, on your, you know, polo uh, neck, um, you can measure across the diameter. Um, Google button line size chart and there's a bunch of, this is a good one. And it just lets you know, it shows you all of um, millimeters, inches, things like that. Where's the little chart? So if you can see it here. Um, so we have, you know, the line sizes right here and what those are equivalent um, in diameter. So a line 20 uh, size button is a half inch in diameter, 13 millimeters in diameter, so on and so forth. So it's, it's fairly easy for you to look up the line sizes. And that's again, that's only if you have a trim or have a button, things like that. If there's anything else included on the garment that you'd like to put down, um, it, you can put that here in other. And then a general description of the garment will be placed here. Um, down here is the measurements. I'm going to do an extended sort of explanation on that later, but I'm just going to go over the basic parts of the spec sheet. Your garment images um, can be uh, filled in here. So uh, these are image added fields, so you can click and drag. Um, images just to plop right into these uh, little spots right here. Uh, front and back images should be used. Oop. Yep, there's a second page to this for no reason, so just ignore that. Um, and the last thing is there's a comment section. So if there's any sort of additional information or um, explanation needed uh, down here, that um, doesn't really fit in any place else that you think needs to be said about the garment that can help uh, define its construction um, or garment details, uh, you can put it down here in the comment section. There's also a few extra measurement slots. So if you do have an additional detail like a hood or a button placket or a pocket or any little tiny detail, you can add in a few extra measurement um, uh, metrics here and fill them in here. Now, the last thing I want to say is um, on your measurements, we have three different sizes. Um, typically, what we'll do is when we spec our original garment, we'll keep it to around a medium. And I explained why this happens um, because when, of, uh, when we grade sizes, we want to start with a middle size. So the uh, pattern distortion is kept to a minimum as we alter it to larger and si uh, smaller sizes. So typically when we grade our sample, it's done in a middle size and we put this in and then we will um, send it out to be graded and they'll put in the measurements uh, for the graded sizes um, uh, alongside in the other slide slots. Now for you guys, you only have to do one size and you're just gonna pick what's ever on hand. If it's not one of these sizes, just go ahead and in the comments say, oh, you know, it's uh, instead of a small, it's an extra small, or instead of a, a, a large, it's an extra large, or I don't know. I always want them to start doing extra mediums. It doesn't really make sense, but it sounds funny. Um, so just, you know, any sort of size, or if it's a number size, I mean, typically knits are not done in numbered sizes, but if for some weird reason it is, 
uh, just let me know the numbered sizes uh, in the comments down here. Now, these are the measurements that you're going to need. And you're going to say, wow, Kate, we're doing just a simple knit garment and we need this many measurements? Yeah, this is like a realistic amount of measurements. Um, and that's also why I'm really saying that those ones you see on Google like uh, images are just ridiculously small. Um, I don't know if they're, again, just meant to be uh, basic overviews. Um, but, uh, that's a sort of, this is a more realistic amount of, oops, uh, measurements that you would see for, uh, something like this, um, which again is, is very simple. It's a very, very simple, simple, um, uh, garment, but still we need quite a few measurements. And again, um, the reason we need them, again, it's not to make our lives more complicated, but it's just to sort of, um, get our backs. Um, uh, so when we actually get our garments back, um, we know what we're getting. We've specified what we want. And if we don't get what we want, um, we can refer back to that spec sheet and say, Hey, look, this is what I specified and you didn't do it or blah, blah, blah. Okay. So, um, in addition to that spec sheet, I'm going to give you guys this as well. Um, and it's a spec sheet measurement guide description. So it gives you a description on what every measurement is supposed to be measuring, which I'm going to go over right now. I'm going to go over this right now, and then um, I'm also going to do a uh, live action video of me specking a garment um, as part two of this video. Um, just to sort of show you the actual physical um, uh, process of doing it. But right here I have a very simple t-shirt. Um, so you should, again, be looking at something like this uh, for your uh, uh, garment to spec. Now, um, I'll, it shouldn't really look like this when you spec it. So this is obviously, it's, it's like rounded out and on a form. Um, I'll go over how to lay out your garment um, in the live action one, but it should be sort of as flat as possible. No wrinkles, completely clean, nothing like filled out or anything. So you're not going to be doing a spec you know, on a form or anything. It's gonna be flat on a table. So um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just talk about all of our measurements and um, give you a little look at what they're like so we can see what they look like. So your full length, let's start up here. Your full length measurement is your high point shoulder. Your high point shoulder, you have two shoulder points. This one up here, it's like your side neck a um, uh, uh, point right here we call it sometimes it's called side neck um, but it is uh, also more often called the high point shoulder in the land of specs you also have your low point shoulder so if you imagine your shoulder seam running across here you have high point shoulder up here on the neck side and you have low point shoulder uh, here on the armhole side so what I want to do when I take the full length is I'm measuring from high point shoulder directly straight down to the sweep. And so that would be the, the, uh, the longest, fullest length of our garment. So that would be our full length right there, our high point shoulder all the way down to the sweep. And you say, okay, you didn't, you didn't do it from up here. Ah, that's because this is actually a trim, which would be considered a collar. I wanna do it at that seam of the neckline, not at the opening, okay? Um, because that's going to be a part of our uh, neckline trim measurement. So I'm doing it at that actual intersection right there. Not all the way up here, but just right down here. Next, we want our center front length. Now, our center front length is from center front neck straight down to the sweep. And that, again, is done. If you, if you take, I'm going to zoom in. It's a little difficult to see, but this is a knit. Most knits will have a bit of trim, a rib trim. You can see that. So the neck seam, there's a neck line seam right here coming down around here. And this is the actual neck opening, but we're taking everything from the seam and not from the opening, okay? So the seam here, center front neck to sweep straight down. Just like so, okay? So that's our center front length. Our center back length is the same thing, but we just take it from the center back neck 
all the way down to sweep. Okay, so that's our center uh, back length. And our next is our uh, neck drops. So the neck drops, um, they're not just one straight measurement. A few measurements are going to have to uh, 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 make you do just vertical distances. So what does that mean? So when I talk about the front neck drop, it's the vertical uh, distance or difference um, from high point shoulder to center front neck. So what we do is we measure straight down from our high point shoulder on this, you know, straight vertical line, and then we'll measure or sort of create a guideline from our center front neck across like this, okay? So what I want is I just want the distance here from center front neck, or I'm sorry, from high point shoulder down to where this center front neck line intersect. So just this measurement right here. So again, that's uh, uh, not this measurement, not this measurement, which would include vertical and horizontal uh, uh, measurements, uh, but just this vertical distance or difference between where the high point shoulder is and where the um, center front neck is. So uh, again, we've squared out this sort of imaginary guideline from the center front neck and we're measuring down um, right here. So the actual measurement would be, oops, let's see if I can get that a little bit better, would be right here. So this, so I'm gonna highlight it in um, uh, purple. So just this distance, okay? Um, same thing for the back, same concept for your back. But we're going to take that square, this square right here, instead of from the center front neck, we're going to take it to the center back neck and square it down. And now we're going to measure that same distance in the back as well, from high point shoulder down as far as that uh, back neck drop will go. Okay? So let's get rid of these guys. Next, we need the neck width. Neck width is simple. It's from high point shoulder to high point shoulder, straight across. So there we are. High point shoulder to high point shoulder, straight across. Um, our shoulder width is low point shoulder to low point shoulder. So across like that. Boop, boop. Shoulder uh, width is um, high point shoulder to low point shoulder. So it is just um, that shoulders, that length of the shoulder seam itself, just like so. The shoulder drop, let's get rid of this guy. Uh, the shoulder drop is the vertical distance between high point shoulder and low point shoulder. So we're gonna set up the same uh, thing we did before um, on the neck drop. I'm going to square out a horizontal line from my low point shoulder, like so. And then I'm going to measure only the vertical distance. So this will be in red, pink or red this time. Uh, from the high point shoulder down. So just this distance right here. So again, I've squared out this sort of guideline from my uh, low point shoulder, and I'm measuring from my high point shoulder straight down to that guideline, and that's our shoulder drop. We have across chest, which is pretty much the same as our across back, but just one is the front and one is the back, and it's done from mid armhole point, so you take the point at the very middle of your arm hole and measure across, like so. So armhole to armhole seam taken from mid armhole point to mid armhole point across like that, across chest. Now your cross back is the same, it's just done on the back. Um, your across bust is, is done side seam to side seam, two inches below your armhole. 
So what you do is you measure straight down two inches below your armpit right here. So it says armhole, but what um, it means is where the armhole ends. So really at that armpit point, you measure down two inches and measure across side seam to side seam. Uh, that is your cross bust. Um, you might have another across back as well. I haven't included it here. Um, again, I'm trying to just sort of keep it um, uh, simple for right now. Um, even though a lot of times, especially for females, our cross bust on the front is going to be bigger than our cross bust on the back. Maybe I should have put it in there. Who knows? You can put it in. If you find a significant difference, you can write it in. Um, uh, and the same measurement, just two inches below your armhole on the front and the back. Uh, across waist, there usually isn't two, especially if this is knits. So again, you might say, oh, you know, um, of course there's going to be a huge difference in, you know, front waist or back waist or front blah, blah, blah. But again, this is knits. There's typically not a, um, a significant difference um, in things like front waist arc and back waist arc when done in knit patterns. Um, it, it's not quite as uh, uh, precise as woven garments uh, due to the, the um, higher tolerance and uh, stretch of the knit. Um, ooh, tolerance. We haven't talked about tolerance. I'll talk about tolerance um, in a minute. I'll round out with that. I actually didn't leave a box for tolerance left. That should be done in maybe the comments. Um, okay, sorry, sorry to get off subject. Let me go through the rest of these. Uh, uh, waist, we measure down nine inches from the uh, armhole. Or if you find, it really should be done at that um, most narrow part, if there is a most narrow part. If not, just use nine inches down from the armhole. If there is a most narrow part and it's not nine inches down, just correct it or uh, put that in the comments. Uh, across high hip, uh, we're gonna measure that at 12 and a half inches below our armhole. So straight down from the armhole we measure down 12 and a half inches would be about right there. Um, our hip is measured um, uh, 16 and a half inches down from the straight down uh, and across from the armhole, side seam to side seam. So it'd be maybe about like right here. And we have a front hip and a back hip. So just what is in the front and the back. Um, and then we also have a sweep. The sweep refers to the opening, the bottom opening of a top, and you would measure really the full width around. So I'm doing it straight here, but um, if it doesn't fall straight, you wanna um, curve it, so the full opening. Um, so really it would be a little bit more, especially judging by this. It should, if this was not rounded out, this would be much more flat, but if there is a little bit of rounding to it, you wanna include that rounding in it. And that's, again, your sweep opening, the whole width of your bottom down here. Okay, so those are, again, our basic measurements. And again, if you're finding, you know, the full hip, uh, uh, the hip should be really the full measurement kind of right down here. Now it can kind of flare out more if you want. If it flares out more, just do it at 16 and a half below armhole. But, like, take your waist. If your waist is you measured it down 10 inches below the armhole or eight inches below the armhole is the smallest point. Just make note of that. This is really just meant as a guide and this can change from size to size and it can change from kind of company to company depending on the customer and sort of the ideal fit model for the clothing. And it also depends on, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, if this, this is for kid children, so children, these measurements might uh, change dramatically. So like the bust for a child might be a half an inch to an inch instead of two inches below the armhole because they're just tinier and more compact. But again, these are general guides on what this is supposed to be. And every company, again, will have sort of their own measurements that they take, um, sometimes their own descriptions of measurements that they take. This is sort of a general overview of what you're going to see and what you should expect from flats. Okay, so let's do the, our armhole measurements. We have uh, two for the armhole. We have the armhole straight, which is low point shoulder. Sorry, low point shoulder to armpit, straight. So that is a straight measurement, just like that, okay? Then we have armhole curved. 
and this measurement is the entire length of your um, armhole, the curve distance. So whatever that is, you're going to do that as well. This not, doesn't look that curved, but just imagine it is. Okay. I'll curve it more. So that entire curved line of the armhole. So one, just the straight distance from low point shoulder to armpit, and one, you're just going to take that armhole seam and measure the entire curved length of it. And that is armhole curved. Um, then we have uh, sleeve length overarm. And that is from uh, low, so you would put your sleeves out as straight as possible. It's going to be a little bit wonky here because it's, it's rounded out like it's in a shoulder. But it is low point shoulder to sleeve opening, straight. Low point shoulder, sleeve opening on the top there. That's your overarm length. Then you do your underarm length, which is armpit to uh, uh, sleeve opening uh, as such, okay? Now, um, we will also have a few other ones. Let's scroll down to see what they are. We have a, a bicep, which is typically taken, let's go like this. Um, what we'll do is we'll measure two inches along our underarm away from the armpit. So we'll measure out two inches down like this and then straight across um, uh, the sleeve like so. That is your bicep measurement. Uh, and we also have our sleeve opening measurement uh, across here like this. So our sleeve opening. Now, of course, this is for basic sleeve shapes. If your sleeve has um, another um, sort of different shape, like a bell sleeve, or it has a puff uh, sleeve, or something else like that, um, you're going to need additional measurements and additional detail. But this is just for like a simple straight sleeve with without a bell or a puff or a, you know anything like that. Now we have our trim heights. Um, so if there's a collar, and again, any sort of trim, so this, you would might not say it's a collar, but it would go under this marking anyways. It has a one by one trim. It looks to be about an inch in this uh, illustration here. I would put that in. So here is my collar height, this little trim, rib trim here. I'd put in one inch. If you've got a turtleneck or other little um, uh, collar or something like that, you want to measure just how... Uh, basically straight up from the neck seam to its edge right here. Um, uh, and I'll probably do a turtleneck in my uh, live action sketch uh, spec so you would know how to do that. But that would go under collar height as well right here. Um, cuff height is the same thing. Is your little trim or whatever other kind of cuff you have at that sort of end of the actual sleeve fabric, that seam down. Um, this probably looks like a one inch sort of one by one rib trim here. That goes in here. Sweep, if there's any sort of trim down here, and many times with a knit garment, it'll be a, uh, a rib trim down here as well. You'll put that trim down there at the sweep. Um, and that goes over our basic measurements for the uh, uh, spec, um, and especially for our uh, knit top right.